Well, we're finally uh, ready to depart um, Ballyhome Bay. Yeah. It's been a great anchorage, actually. Um, it's swelly, rolly now. But the only reason it's rolling now is because the wind is now more to the north northeast side um but when it was coming from the south and the southeast we had hardly any roll we had one bit of roll but the roll we've tended to have you see one of the big car ferries or a big tanker going past in belfast's main channel up there and then about 10 minutes later you get the wake from it it takes that long to get here doesn't it mm. so we did have a little bit of wake but because you're so far away from the the um, tankers and stuff um it's very very slight um but also i thought we were going to get a, quite a lot of tidal components in mm. but it's only you only get the tide when it's coming it's swapping from uh, when it's the south going south the north going tide i don't didn't notice the change over for that one at all when we when we were coming into um well, home bay it's sweet we right. had we had like um we could feel the tide out there yeah but as soon as we came into the bay itself it just went yeah well i think what happens is it sweeps around the headland mm. but it, it doesn't continue to turn and come in here no it didn't so it was very very sheltered really happily uh, recommend uh, it was better is... shelter than i thought it was going to be much better shelter than I thought it was going to be. Thank you, Bally Home, for all the wonderful entertainment you have provided us. Oh, the dinghies. With the dinghies and the... Uh... Well, there was a few of them I thought were coming aboard for a cup of tea. <laughs> One got really, really close. But it was great entertainment. From September onwards, uh, they don't race, sorry, middle of September, they don't race. Um, but um, all through the summer season, they race and... Um, well, Tuesday night, the other night when they all came tearing past, it was the last, I think it was the last fling of the season. Yes, uh, but that's Tuesday night, so um, if you are going to anchor in Ballyhome, try a Tuesday night. Got, well, in the summertime. In the summertime, because it's got great entertainment laid on. Make sure you keep your lights on. <laughs> Guess they don't see a great big white boat. <laughs> Coming into Donica D Sound or Copeland Sound, depending on what you want to call it. Um, we're coming through the line of boys and we can already see a line of dark water in the distance, which we think is where the tide, which is just flipping in here, meets the Irish Sea tide, which is probably still just about going north outside. Um, yeah, we're just on the flip of it going south.
I'm afraid to say you're uh, tuning in to a cockpit moan. Beverly and I have been monitoring the weather like hawks, um, trying to organise this passage over to the Isle of Man. Um, and today, you know, I was looking at the weather and everything like that. And today, it should be well sailable. 20 knots of wind. 20 knots? It should be well sailable in 20 knots of wind. I'm lucky if I'm seeing five. Which is why we're motoring. Um, we've had, um, when I came through Copeland, um, that was a little bit more tricky than I was expecting. But I think the main reason for that is um, we hadn't let the tide establish in Copeland. And um, when we were coming out of Copeland, uh, there was um, still some north going tide um, against it and that's why there was practically a sea of, war uh, sea of water. Now somebody I know uh, used the way in Maelstrom and I always thought oh that's a little bit harsh. You know you can't really use the word Maelstrom for Copeland Sound but I think in the right conditions I could see where you could get the word Maelstrom from to be honest. You know, it was, um, I only had like five knots of wind, and um, yeah, it could get quite nasty in there if you had the right conditions, especially with the amount of tide and all the rest of it against you. We did have the Genoa out um, at one point, but th that was just flapping, a bit like me really, because I'm on the helm today, and I'm like, well what am I to do? There's nothing me to do, and he can do the job. <laughs> Never mind, um, I'm keeping my hopes up um, because Beverly's cooking downstairs. <laughs> that means only one thing, it means dinner. <sighs> what the hell happened? I've gone completely off course. Just trust the binnacle. Go 130 on that cut on the magnetic compass. Nobody's gonna tell you off, I promise. I know, but it's just um right, okay, I'm starting to get the right way now. Oh right, okay, I'm stopping, I'm slowing, I'm slowing the big circle. Yeah. Put it on, put it in the neutral, put it on the on. Right there, okay. Ah, four times. Oh no, we said it only about one time. There. Uh, that was a nightmare. Right, the steps are really wet. Just be very careful. All right, love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that again. Beverly uh, said, oh, oh, there's some wind. Let's get the sails up. But it's just, just the front in front of the school. I couldn't even look up to the mast it was that wet I just got water in my eyes and I am absolutely drenched I need another drowned rat moment you're having one I know I can Um, we are sailing um, I had to go in and change because I was that wet we both were we were absolutely soaked um, 
so we had to go and change but um at least the winds turned up at last but boy it, did it arrive with a bang it did and uh, we basically we, we 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 were too quick to try and put the sails up and then uh, we were trying to put the sails up and it just descended the way biblical rain it was a biblical rainstorm it yeah. just descended i noticed on the uh, speed of our ground we were doing eight and a half knots um, we're slower now. We are slower now. We're only 7.7 .7 knots. Right, but we were doing eight and a half at one point. We were doing eight and a half, but um, to oh. some extent we were motor sailing at that point, but now we've taken the engine off because quite frankly, seven knots is more than adequate, yeah. especially when you've got two reefs in the um, Jenny and one, Jenny in, the main. And one in the main. <laughs> in some ways I feel that this... Uh, little chit chat is a bit daft because sometimes I have ideas I want to talk about different things and one of the things I wanted to talk about today was our passage plan from about two years ago two years ago it was the prior to Covid wasn't it Bev? it could well have been I'll have to look at the dates it was it was prior to Covid and we basically planned our passage to the Isle of Man and um, that's the passage plan that I'm using today. That's actually a passage plan to Liverpool. Just it the is. Isle of, the Isle of Man is part of that plan. It is part of that plan, but it's still what the part I'm using. The part I'm using to the part of the passage plan to Peel as my passage plan today. Uh -huh. cause, but that's the difference, really, between a passage Can plan... Can you put it more that way and keep it out of the rain, please? <laughs> OK. But that is the difference between a passage plan, um, you know, that, sorry, that is the real significant advantage of a passage plan. A passage plan is all relative to the tides and all you have to do is put in the tides of the day and the plan should still work. I'll let you know. But <laughs> Nothing's gone to plan today. Well, there is that, because I can tell you now, the winds are now starting to drop. And we're we still going over our minimum speed. Of, um, winds are gusting, it's not dropping. Okay, three knots. But, anyway, we are following a plan from two years ago. Well, we're scooting along now. Um, but I'm just down here to... Um, do a log entry. Uh, Beverly and I still do leg entries. Um, significant events or probably sort of like every hour, just depends on the kind of sale. Sometimes it can be three hours, it just really does depend on the sale. But at the moment um, it's a wee bit windy out there and I've just come in. And I've just come in to do a log entry, and it's just one of the things that we and Bab do. Even though it was only half an hour after since my last post, um, it's getting dark outside. So Beverly and I have put an extra reef in the main um, purely because um, it's now night time and we're sailing at night and we want to make sure that we are well configured for that. Um, but we have dropped from, let me just consult my blog, 6.6 .6 to 5.5. So we're still going along at 5.5 .5 knots, uh, but we're now in a much better position for a night um, and sailing through the night. Um, we won't be sailing through the night because we're hopefully getting to peel way before then. Um, the gate that I'm uh, aiming for is um, the one that uh, the high tide is at 11 o'clock. Um, so that is the gate I'm going for and because it is a high, um, 
a good high tide at the moment um, we can get in and up until two o'clock in the morning there's no way we're going to be needing to get in at that time we'll be in way before then uh, but um, you know it's a good gate to go for because it's a three hours plus or minus three whereas when it's on neeps and things it can only be plus or minus one but at the moment it's plus or minus three so happy days I'm being born from a chrysalis. I don't know if I'm going to be a butterfly or a moth, but never mind. It's late at night, you're going to be a moth. I'm definitely going to be a moth, but I cannot adequately tell you how tired I am without uh, several uh, beep, beep, beeps. But never mind. Oh, it's. Beverly once said, coming in at to peel at night is a rite of passage now i have to say beverly when beverly came in at night she had a lot more issues um in the she had crosswinds and all sorts but i can tell you now mine was not without incident tying up to the dock and everything oh there was plenty going on but you're in i am and i'm happy to say i'm knackered